Hi everybody and welcome to lesson 10 of not so personal narrative writing. Yesterday we heard a narrative by a 19 year old author called on helping others. We talked about how Leah learned something from the people she met on the farms in Florida. Do you remember what Leah learned throughout that narrative? One of the things she learned was that people need to be compassionate and share with one another. Strong personal narratives often include a lesson that the writer or narrator learns and how they change as a result of something that they experienced. So in the narrative on helping others learning a valuable lesson, the author Leia does something that all good writers do. She makes sure that the verbs in her story are in the same tense. Now this is something that I'm a little nervous to try to teach via PowerPoint because it's a little complicated, but I think we can do it or we can at least try. It's not going to be a brand new concept to all of you. Um, it's something that you've done before, even if you don't realize it. So when we keep verb tense the same, it basically means that we keep our whole story in the past, if we're talking about the past, or we keep our whole story in the present, if it's in the present. So we don't tell a story like it's happening in the past and then all of a sudden jump to using present tense, right? So for example, from my seat in the van, the rows of tomato plants looked like neatly laid pickup sticks. Looked meaning in the past. The plants looked, right? It was harvest time. If we were talking in the present, she would have said, it is harvest time, but her story's in the past, so it's was. It was harvest time near Quincy, Florida, picking season for hundreds of migrant workers. With a team of youth, I was, not I am, ready to spend a week renovating an old church and community center. Yet after that week of labor, my most valuable lesson came, the lesson came, not from my own efforts, but from spending time with the church community. So this is called simple subject and simple predicate. In the, let's see, we're gonna look up here in red. The plants looked, plants is the subject and they looked a certain way, that's the verb. Subject, predicate, plants looked. What looked? The plants. It was, was is the verb, so that's the predicate. It is the subject, it was. Next we have, I was. The subject is I, the person talking, and the verb was, I was ready. Next we have lesson came. The subject is the lesson, the verb or predicate is came. So subject, predicate, lesson came. Subject, predicate, lesson came, okay? I know that's tricky to do over um, YouTube, trying our best. If it doesn't make perfect sense, please don't worry. We're gonna try to do this together. Okay. I want you to try to do this in the second paragraph on your own. I'll go back and underline some of them with you afterward, but just try your best. You're not gonna be able to underline, just read through the paragraph on your own and try to find the subject and simple predicate. So the subject or is the who or the what, the simple predicate is the verb. Go ahead and try to find some. Now there are a lot in here. All right, so the family invited us. Family is subject, the verb that they did, they invited. Family invited us to come with them to the tomato fields. Early in the morning, we rose. We also dressed. We also went to meet the family. They smiled, slowing their routine to be patient with us. I met their daughter, who was almost my age. She and her brother, there's the subject, taught, the verb, me how to pick the best tomatoes, those of good size and color. In the hot sun, they showed us where they kept water and laughed, so they laughed with us when we took breaks. 
I realized how much, so on and so on. So if you didn't get all of those, if you only got one, if you didn't get any, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Just make sure that if you're telling your story in past tense, all of your verbs make sense in past tense, okay? If you're telling a story about something that happened to you, you wouldn't be saying, I went to the beach, I was eating a sandwich, I ran to the water, I am sitting at my desk now, I am feeling happy, right? You want to keep it all in the past, all in that part of the story, okay? Thank you for being patient through this slide. I know that it's tricky to learn this via YouTube. I feel nervous about it too. It's really hard to teach this stuff via YouTube. I'm doing my best. I know you're doing your best. We're in this together and I can't wait until we can learn in a classroom together again. Now it's time to pause and think and write. Reread the writing that you did yesterday and underline subjects and predicate pairs in your sentences. So think subject, the person, the predicate, the verb. I went, I saw, we played. After you do that, notice, are all the verbs in the same tense? Are they all in the past or all in the present? The ones that aren't, are they that way for a reason? If not, correct the verb tenses to be all the same, unless there's a specific reason that you wrote it that way and that it's not confusing to the reader. A way to help with this, and I try to make all of your writing as independent as possible, but a way to do this is to grab an adult when they are not working and it's convenient for them, or don't and just do your best on your own, and say, does this make sense? Is it all in the past tense? And read them your paragraph. Um, you can also do this with a classmate if you want to call someone up or maybe someone that you know wants someone to talk to right now. For example, I know that my grandpa loves to get phone calls with me right now because I can't visit him. So that could be someone that you call as well if you have a family member or a friend that you know is feeling lonely and would like to help you with your work. Okay. Now it's time for independent writing. You've worked so hard. I'm so proud of you. Now you get 20 to 30 minutes to write. You can write about things that you've heard or learned from other people or a fictional character has heard or learned from other people. You can continue a personal narrative or a not so personal narrative. You can start a new narrative or not so personal narrative. You don't need to do these things in this order. It's whatever you want to do that's related to narrative writing, okay? Thanks for hanging in there in this tricky lesson. I'm so proud of you always. And as always, happy writing. Go bees.